Hello, Jeff. Here we go. Nice to see you. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Very nice. In the sun. Come on. It's, um, I can see the reflection in the, mirror, in the window behind me, but I'll just say it's cloudy in Connecticut, so I'm glad you have some sun. Yeah, it's completely sunny. I show you the vineyard. Wow. Oops, sorry. Beautiful. So the sky is perfect. Yeah. Bruno, I'm going to post. I couldn't pin a comment to let people know who you are. So I'm going to, I did this last night to kind of show where you are, that it's an island. And I had a trouble figuring that out, but this kind of helps make sense. And then I have pictures like this and this that if you ever want me to refer to that you just tell me and we can go back okay okay all right so let's just start by you tell people who you are introduce yourself and say who you are and i like to hear how you got into the wine game because i always find that interesting okay so i'm bruno maillard the ceo of uh, grand domaine du littoral which is a subsidiary of the vranken pomery group uh, we grow vineyards in south of france in camargue here in Jarras and in Provence also in Chateau La Gordon. Uh, so I joined uh, the wine business and the wine making after my study in Montpellier, where I study agronomy and enology, and then worked for 15 years in a, in a cellar in southwest of Languedoc, and then joined the, the Vranken Pomery Group and work now with Mr. Vranken to produce uh, the rosé wine in south of France. Beautiful. That's that's a very experienced resume and very concise. <laughs> so can you explain where you are? Because it's confusing. People see Rosé, they think it's Provence, but you're not really Provence. Can you just explain the general area? And then the Camargue and Egmort, I think you're between. It's like the delta where the Rhone empties in. So can you broadly explain where you are? So we are in uh, in Camargue, so it's the, at the western border of uh, Provence, between Provence and Languedoc, so it's a special place. Uh, in south of France, as you can see on the map, our, all our vineyards are close to the Mediterranean Sea, less than 10 miles. So it's important to get fresh air, especially this afternoon when where the climate is uh, really hot. It's the full summer in south of France, and here the temperature doesn't go higher than 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's cool. And at night, we have the fresh air coming from the sea. It's really important for the, the terroir. Um, all the, the island and all the vineyard, I show you the, the vines, they are on the, uh, planted in, in the sand. So it's pure sand. And uh, it's like if we have the estate on a dune. Okay, so uh, it's... Uh, really long but uh, thin uh, land of uh, sand and uh, the, the vines grow on this sand and if you show the map uh, again uh, we are this sand comes from the Rhone river so the origin is uh, in the Alps mountain uh, the sand comes down with the Rhone river uh, with the water in the Mediterranean Sea uh, and those light elements, sediments, they settle back on the beach during the winter storm. So you, we have those different uh, dunes, uh, dunes uh, bars that settle, uh, and the vineyards are on these uh, sand dunes. So if it's all sand, this is a very maybe silly question, but where is the nutrition for the, for the vines? Is it very far down and just the silt is what it, it feeds on? No, it's really the, the soil is is very poor. There's no it doesn't uh, you have no clay, so the the water is not kept by the the, the soil, uh, and the the it's like if you plant vine in a desert. So it's really poor, and that explains the quality of the wine. Uh, another fact is that the soil is uh, not not deep, so the at the level zero, you have the you have the um, uh, the sea level. So if we dig a hole in the sand, we have the the the, the salty water, and then the vine grow on the upper part of the of the of the sand at 1.5 meter high. So it, the the roots, the vine has only 1.5 meter high of uh, place to to grow its roots. So it's really thin soil and and poor. 
and it's considered as a flat koto, as a koto, so it's flat, but it's really considered as a, as a koto from the agronomical point of view. Okay, and so then what is the actual appellation there? So the, the denomination, it's not yet appellation of origin controlled, but we are going to it, we're going to have it uh, within one year, I hope. We think so. Uh, but the, it, the denomination is Sable de Camargue, which means sand from Camargue. So it's really uh, in Camargue. So it's the delta at, at the bottom of the Rhone River. And, uh, and it's made of sand. And people may know the word Camargue because there's a lot of fleur de sel that comes from there. So I'm going to show this picture again. And can you just explain a little bit? I know it's not your job to talk about salt, but can you explain the salt lagoons in the area a little bit? Yeah, and I will show you if you if you come with me, yeah. I will show you the place we go up, and I will show you the salt lakes. They are just behind, so it's a bit windy. I hope you will you will hear me, but it's okay for the sound. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I go on top of the of those barrels, so we take a bit in the flatland. It's better to take some uh, altitude <laughs> to see the vines just in front. Of us. And then you have the salt lakes. <laughs> at, the, at the back, you have a mount here with the salt mountains. Here, the, the salt lakes. They are pink because of the pink shrimps in the sand. Uh -huh. And just close to it, you see, oh, you have only a few meters. We have the vines. So uh, the vines are really close to the salt. The salt, uh, the salt lakes come from the, the, the water as well in the Mediterranean Sea. So it's only, uh, as I told you, less than 10 miles away. That's a... And with the wind and the, uh, the hot climate, it concentrates a lot. And at the end of the after one year, we have the salt. So you see the white part of the salt is a uh, Wow. Bruno, I can't go well in or on as far. Oh, okay. Now, now, can you repeat the, the question? So I need some more. I, uh, I couldn't hear you by too far from him. From, but what was that? Or just can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, now it's okay. I came I back. I think it's the wind. We couldn't hear you so well, but it was amazing yeah. view. It was almost purple. Um, so just a, another minute again about the salt, because it's so pretty and many people have not seen these salt lagoons. Can you speak about the shrimp again and then what the structure that you were standing on? So the, the pink color of the water comes from the, uh, an algae, which is called uh, Dunella salina, which grows in the, in the salt lakes when the concentration of the water uh, goes at a certain level. And then this, those algae are eaten by the shrimps, small shrimps, Artemia salina, and the pink flamingo. The flamingo, they eat the shrimps, and they turn, they turn uh, pink after one year or two, okay. eating those shrimps. So the, the color of the flamingo comes from the, the salt lakes. That's amazing. That's amazing. So uh, what was that structure you were standing on? It looked like two big barrels? Yeah, it, it, these are, um, it's a piece, as a piece of, piece of art uh, created by Mr. Vanken. Mm -hmm. We have the, those barrels where in our cellar, and uh, we need the place, the space in the cellar to to bottle our wines. So we took this, the barrels out of the cellar and uh, made those uh, amazing terrace rooftop to to admire the, and to see the the view on the on the landscape. That's beautiful. Um, can you explain the name of the domain because it's something unusual to see royal in a domain and jaras are both unusual words in the name of a domain. Can you explain that? Yeah, um, so the, this uh, terroir is, a, is young, uh, and the, the, the history is young. So from the, in France, uh, everything is old, but in Camargue, uh, we are a bit younger. Uh, the, the, the estate is called Royal because uh, the king Saint Louis, Louis IX, uh, came in Jarras to train his knights for the, the crusades. So uh, we, have, we have Egmort is a... Uh, fortified town that was built by Saint Louis, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he, Jarras was part of his uh, kingdom to, and he used it to train his knights. So after one year, 
uh, in the estate with the uh, wind, uh, hot temperature, mosquitoes. Uh, when they resist one year, they were ready to, to go for the crusade. It's a training camp. It's, a, it's such, I was lucky enough to stay in Egmort um, in February and it's a gorgeous, unbelievable place. And then I've been to Grisson for the salt there. So I completely get it, but it's just such a unique, gorgeous, gorgeous place. So can you tell us about the wine from the estate? Um, it's unusual because of the sand and your Grenache Gris. And the, just, can you give us a lowdown about the wine? How, big is, how many hectare under vine? So the, the wine is, uh, it's a, in the pink family, we call it Gris. So it's gray wine. So it's a pale pink and salmon wine. It's due to the maturation conditions of the in the in the vineyard of the terroir. Uh, we we grow the grapes. Uh, we harvest the grapes in August, so really uh, it's really early for south of France. And we get those uh, fruity style wine, uh, especially made uh, with Grenache. So we have other varietals, but the, the base is Grenache, uh, and. The, the taste is really special. So it's in the family of a rosé, but uh, it has a lot of taste. It's a tasty wine uh, with very fresh, not acid because the, the soil is not acid, but uh, the, the taste is really fresh. And what we focus on in, is the, uh, the end of the mouth. The, the taste has to last long in the mouth to, uh, to, to give this pleasure at the end of the tasting and wants you to have another glass. When you finish a glass, you, you want to have another one. Yeah, I, It's important. You guys sent me a bottle and thank you very much for that uh, and to Janet. Um, and I fully agree, it's delicious. But um, so how many hectares under vine? And can I trouble you to explain the difference between pH and acidity in wine? So uh, the, the, the pH is the... Chemical the acidity, is for, uh, sorry, is uh, really the concentration of acid in the wine, uh, and pH is the uh, the concentration of uh, uh, protons. So it's uh, H plus uh, ions in the, in the wine, and pH makes the the sensation of the acidity, uh, and makes all, it also makes the color of the wine, the the shade of the color, it, because anthocyanins that make the red color are really sensible to pH. So that's why in Provence, for instance, we, we also have Provence. Provence are really uh, pink wine, mm -hmm. so with a, a vivid color. And here in Camargue, we are on a gray wine, which is a more uh, salmon, uh, salmon pink. Mm -hmm. So the, the shade is here is given by the, the pH. That comes from the soil, once again. That comes from the terroir. So then what? It's the acidity that makes it refreshing on the mouth? Or the pH, uh, uh, the refreshing the, the refreshing um, acidity can make it fresh, but sometimes it can make it hard also when it's too dry here. If the one is too acid, so it's not the case in Camargue. Uh, but the fresh dates come from the more from the fresh fruit fresh fruit we have in the grapes uh, due to the uh, cool temperature uh, at night during the maturation and you due to the, the fresh air coming from the Mediterranean Sea. Wow. Um, so I have a silly question, but if you have to harvest August, when do you get your August vacation? Sorry? Like everybody in France takes the month of August off for vacation, for live, yeah. but you have to work in August for the harvest. When do you get a vacation? Uh, end of July. Oh, okay. Oh, so <laughs> One or two weeks, but we only have July. Uh, because in August we, we have to be there for harvest. So, <laughs> okay, I would not say I would not say harvest is vacation, but it's the the goal of all our year. So we nobody wants to miss it for sure. Would you mind turning the camera again to show some people that join that might not have seen the vines yet? Okay, I will show you. Perhaps the I will try to show you the sand. Okay, so that you can. It's not only words. Incredible. Just incredible. It's okay. literally like growing it on the desert. Yeah. And those vines are old too, right? Sorry? They're really old too, right? Come back here to have more network. Okay. Yeah. 
I said you um the vines are pretty oil old it looks like too. Yeah, the so the average age of the the vines here in Jaras is uh, 23 years old. Uh but we 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 have the one you have on the picture are the the old vines from the uh the the, the plot uh, Fave 910 the name of the plot which gives a a special cuvee. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those ones uh, were uh, planted in 1965. So they can, uh, we have really old vines and the vine you have on the pictures are uh, ungrafted vines and massal selection. So it gives a, mm -hmm. an extraordinary, unique cuvee. You can find those conditions and the combination of uh, elements elsewhere in, in the world, I think. It's, it's really a, a, a unique, uh, unique cuvee. Yeah, wow. Can you, um talk a little bit about I have understood and maybe I'm wrong but um, sandy soil you usually have more aromatic wine is that correct uh, yeah the they are the the, uh, the flavors are different from shale or limestone and clay for sure uh, it's more delicate uh, we have uh, aromas the the intensity of the aromas are in the fruit. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from the fermentation, but really from the grapes. And that's what we want to, uh, to keep in the, in the glass and in, the, in, our, uh, in, in our bottles, to have this uh, fresh fruit coming from the, mm -hmm. uh, from, from the grapes in the glass. Uh, it, and it's due to those, those sand that, the sand and the fact that we are close to the Mediterranean Sea. It's uh, a combination of different factors. Okay. Um, so I just have one more question about where you are now. Is exp can you explain what a gris de gris is, and then maybe talk about Chapelle Gordon? Yeah. So uh, gris de gris is in uh, in Camargue is the uh, the top quality uh, wine from Sable de Camargue. It's only made from Grenache gris. So some nowadays it's still possible to have black Grenache, Sanso, and grey Grenache. But here in Jarras, we only produce it with uh, Grenache gris. Which is uh, uh, in the family of the of the Grenache. The, color, the, the skin never turns to black completely when it's mature, and we have less color. So it's between a white and a rosé. Okay. Uh, really interesting. Okay. Uh, and we make the domaine de Jarras. The pink flamingo you can find in the U.S. is uh, is a gris wine, so it's made of Grenache gris and black Grenache. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have also the, the cuvee of gris de gris. So in the range of the different range of the, of the wines, we, we have those different qualities. Okay. Yeah. And you, you asked about the Chapelle? Yeah, please. Well, both are the other two. You have two other wineries that you manage, right? Yeah. Uh, so we, we travel 250 kilometers, uh, 150 miles uh, east. Uh, to Provence now, forget about the, the Camargue, uh, and we we are in Chateau La Gordon, so the landscape is totally different. Is uh, we have hills, we are close to the Mediterranean Sea also, ten miles away, uh, but we the vines grow on hills that are made mainly of uh, schist soil shale, uh, but we also have a bit of limestone and clay, so it's in the heart of Provence. What the in Provence, we call the Golden Triangle, Pierre Feu, mm -hmm. which is a, a specific appellation in the, in the big appellation Côte de Provence. And La Chapelle is the main cuvee of Côte de Provence, Pierre Feu, uh, made of with our old vines of uh, Grenache, Shiraz, Sasso, and Roll. And it's made of, uh, made in, the, in our, uh, with our, those, the selection of those old vines. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a spe specific bottles uh, of Chateau La Garden, bottle of Chateau La Garden, and it's I, I had that the other night. It's beautiful wine. Um, the bottle's an unusual shape. Is there a historic relevance or reason for the bottle? I can't hear you anymore. Sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, you have a problem. Your, I think your phone set it off. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Back. Okay. Sorry. I, your, your question, please. Uh, oh. um, the bottle for the Chapelle Gordon is a little unusual. Is there a historic relevance or reasoning? Because a lot of Provence has very pretty and unusual bottles. Yeah. We when Mr. Vancan arrived in uh, both Grand Domaine du Littoral and especially Chateau La Gordon, he creates this bottle. So it's uh, 
uh, part of the the know-how of the of marketing in Champagne applied to the the Provence wine. So in uh, 2005, when he, he came in, it, we were the one of the first to to have specific bottles for for our wine in Provence, and uh, he created this bottle completely different from what was made uh, before. And nowadays, we see that uh, everyone, has, as you said, has uh, nice bottles and specific bottles for for their cuvee. I think it's part of the success of uh, the rosé wine category to be able to create and have this uh, fantasy that is uh, really uh, that is pleasant for the all, all the people and all the, the clients all, all around the world. Uh, it's part of yeah. the success of this category. I think. Very remarkable. The wine is, is important. There... For sure. Oh, a hundred percent. Is there a, um, <laughs> there must be an actual chapelle and the name Gordon. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sorry, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, I hear you. you did you hear the question? Can you speak about is the show no, no. there is chapelle and the the Gordon thing? Uh, if there's a chapelle in the in the vineyard. Well, the name Chapelle Gordon is there a is it a family name Gordon and there is an actual chapelle there, chapel. Uh, yeah, Go uh, Gordon is uh, the name of Chateau La Gordon came from the. Uh, Comte de Gourdon, which all, uh, was the uh, that had the, the chateau in the 17th century, mm -hmm. so we gave his name to the La Gourdon to the to the chateau, and La Chapelle is because we have uh, stones of a chapelle. We found them, uh, so it's destroyed now. But Mr. Vanken wants to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. so we are just now uh, we are renewing the chateau, and uh, the next step will be to rebuild the chapelle. Okay. So with the stones of the of the, the existing chapelle. But to to be to be honest, if you want to come to marry uh, to marry you in uh, in Chateau La Gordon, it's not yet possible. You have to wait <laughs> a few years. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, the Domaine du Littoral, can you speak about that one a little bit? I'm fascinated by, you have three jobs. So Grand Domaine du Littoral is the uh, the name of the company, uh, the subsidiary of Ronquen Pomery Group that uh, that has all the these vineyards in south of France. So it's uh, reached 5,000 acres, so 2,000 hectares of vineyard in Sable de Camargue and in Côte de Provence. So all uh, are grown organic. So it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest in the world, uh, vineyard, uh, private owned, in uh, run, grown organic in the world, I think. In Europe, for sure, and in, in the world, I, I, it must be one of the, the biggest ones. So it's, uh, we began uh, the, um, to, to convert the vineyard to organic uh, 10 years ago, uh, or eight years ago. And we will finish, uh, we will have all the wines in uh, 2023 organic. So it's a big challenge for all the, uh, the team of Rondomaine du Littoral that made it. Uh, we had some uh, problem with the downy milieu at the beginning and so on. Nowadays, it's uh, resolved. And especially this year where we have a huge pressure of milieu and the vines are healthy, beautiful. The, the harvest is there, it's now maturing. So it was a big challenge, but we made it. And uh, everyone in the company is proud of it to be uh, at the same time uh, a vine grower, a winemaker, and uh, to respect the environment. We are living in a natural park. Uh, as I show you once again, I will show you. Please. Uh, the, the, place, the place is huge. It's in the nature. You have only vineyard, natural landscape, uh, water, animals. And us, so we are in the in the natural park, and we we work in the natural park, and we have to protect it. Organic is uh, a solution, perhaps not the perfect one, and we need to improve. Uh, we will improve in the future with new varietals and other things. So we are always try to improve our practice to be to be better. It's not only organic is no longer a question. It's not only world. It's real life for yeah, us. Yeah. So how do you, um, this is another just silly logistic question, but if you're two places you're going back and forth, do you stay a couple days in the place? It, Sorry? Do you stay in Egmort and back in Provence, or how does that work? You go back and forth a lot. Uh, we, are the, all, we have separate teams uh, dedicated to each place. 
I, uh, I and Mr. Ronken, we only travel from one to the other. Uh, so I go there. I will go there uh, in two days. So it's only two an hour, two hour and a half drive. Okay. But it's possible to go uh, to go and come back uh, within a day. But I prefer to go at the end of the day before yeah. to be able to be uh, really in early morning with the team when they go in the vineyard. Yeah. Uh, and, and see if, because in the afternoon it's too hot to work in the vineyard, so they, they work from at night and then till uh, mid, midday. That's cool. That's a smart way of doing it. So we're almost at yes. the half hour mark. Can I just ask how is the quarantine and the confinement is over now? It's back to normal, or how is everything there with that? Uh, in, we in south of France, we we had some uh, some people that were uh, that that got the. The COVID, but not not in our company. Only Good. a few ones, uh, and we were really preserved of that. We are in, uh, we are lucky to be in a preserved area. Uh, the impact is more on the on the sales, for sure. All the on, all the on trade market is closed, so uh, it's complicated. Uh, we are lucky to be also in the off trade, and people uh, drank our rosé wine, bought our rosé wine in the off trade to to drink them at home. Yeah. Or sip them at home. Uh, so for the sales, it's okay. We had to adapt uh, in the vineyard, but it's it's easy when when you have all this space to to be to respect the social distancing. Uh, so we 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 need to to we always adapt. So it's the I think it's the life of uh, of vine grower to adapt to the natural conditions. Uh, and we 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 adapt and uh, we are ready because we 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 really uh, take uh, care and and uh, want don't don't want to have it again i know in the us you have a yeah. second wave coming probably perhaps we'll we'll have uh, some in france we have to be ready because in one month we'll we'll have the harvest so uh, we we all take care of each other and uh, we we want to to be ready for the harvest so it's uh, we hope we do not have, will not have any problem yeah. in the near future. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's really a pleasure to meet you, and I can't wait. I'm hopefully going to get back there one day for a visit, hopefully. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. It's a, we'll, we'll everybody meet. for helping me up to Jan and, and everybody at Palmer So I appreciate it. It's really lovely to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.